in our little series of little quick tutorials to show you how to use some of the various software tools. These little tutorials will not be, won't, won't teach you how to use every function of the program, but it might it'll show you some little things that will be useful for some of the assignments you're working on. For example, in determining the mutation that you need to make for, for online assignment number two, or assignment number two, I want you to go ahead and I want, to, I want to generate a figure that has both the protein sequence and the DNA sequence on it that are lined up so that you can see which codon is associated with, it, with, with which amino acid. And one of the easy ways to do it and one of the more powerful ways to do this for me is to use a, a program that Dr. Wasco introduced me to and that's called um, a plasmid editor. There are probably several other DNA manipulation programs that can do the same thing. If you're familiar with some of those, go ahead and feel free to use those. I looked a little bit online for online tools and I didn't find any that generated the, the figure the way I wanted to do it. So I will go ahead and show you how I did this figure and I will probably be giving you a copy of this figure that you can use in your work. But part of um, assignment number one is to generate a figure like this. So what I have here is I downloaded from uh, the yeast database the sequence. And I will have, I've already shown you how to do that. I did that in a prior video. Here's the sequence. And what I'm going to do here is go to this thing called Open Reading Frames, Course, click Translate, and I'm going to... I find that students know the three-letter codes better than the one-letter codes. Those of us that have done a lot of this over the years, we kind of know both and we recognize both. I don't necessarily want to do codon spacing because I don't, I don't like to see the spaces in there, but you might want to. So with you know, codon spacing, it'll be like, you know, be GTT space GCC space CAA. But I will... Go ahead and I, I'm not going to put that spacing in there. I like line numbers on both on both sides, left and the right, because that means I can count in and I know where, where I am. And the DNA, I want the DNA to be above the protein sequence. So I'm going to click OK. And so here we have a figure generated. I'll show you, see here it is. You see they have the, 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 gene, the DNA sequence on the top and the amino acid data on the bottom. Sometimes I do it just the opposite of the amino acids on top. Depends on what I feel like at the time. But I want to go ahead and show you this. And here, this is, an, this is a little file that's in, that you can use in Notepad or something like that. But what I would also probably do is just consider copying this whole thing, opening like something like Microsoft Word, and open up in another window here. I'm going to put my document down. Here's the blank document, and I'll just hit Control V to paste it all back, post, paste it all in. Copy, paste, and so the next thing I'm going to do, and one of the reasons I'm showing you how to do this is, is if you notice that the way that figure came out in here, you notice everything is lined up nice and pretty and all that. And um, everything's lined up, it's easy to be able to see things. If you notice that in Word, the default is they don't line up together. And these capital letters are bigger than the ones that have smaller, lowercase letters and all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the entire document using Control A or Command A if you're on, uh, you know, on uh, iOS or Mac OS and then I'm gonna go through here and go up here and 
there's only a few fonts that are same space for every letter, like, like the old typewriters, which many of you probably haven't ever used. But we'll just go ahead and change everything to Courier New. And notice now that everything is lined up. You see, here's a little, few little things here that are problematic. And what I'm going to do here is go ahead and just delete some of these. I'm going to put a space there, space there. Probably two spaces. And now, you see I have everything lining up. And I'll just go through here and clean that up. And now I have a figure. And everything is nice and lined up. And the key thing here is to remember that everything is lined up because the font is all the same character. So here you have a figure that has the DNA sequence and the, and the protein sequence here. And you can use that to be able to find your mutation and know what the base changes you have to make and all that. So I hope, hopefully um, this quick little tutorial was useful for you. And I want you to generate something very similar to this and for your assignment number one. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email or I'll see me in the lab. Thank you.